Hi. There are many misconceptions about absinthe. For one, the spelling. The Czechs spell absinthe omitting the E at the end. This is for the simple fact that this is how it's spelled in the Czech Republic. The other is the phenomenon known as the Uzo effect, or Lushing, or Laoshing, however you'd like to pronounce. Now, the phenomenon of Laoshing comes from the green anise, here. Now, the green anise, when distilled in a spirit, stays in solution. When it is watered down, it becomes an emulsification, like so. As you can see, it has gone a milky white. That is the emulsification that the green anise causes. With Czech absinthe, you have the less sweeter star anise. This, when watered down, remains unluched, or there is no Uso effect. These are one of the differences between Czech absinthe and other stars. So what we have here are the four predominant flavors of anise, or licorice. Uh, the sweetest of all being the green anise, or aniseed. Next being licorice root. Then we have fennel seed. And finally, the least sweet of all, which is the star anise, predominantly used in Czech dial of absinthe. In many classic cocktail books, absinthe counts as an essential ingredient in any bar because of its unique characteristics. The intensity of the green and east style has meant that classics like the Sazerac, Monkey Gland and Bobby Burns use very small amounts. However, with the Czech style of absinthe, like Green Fairy, it means that it can be used as a base spirit in cocktails. Now, with that in mind, it makes an interesting alternative to a G&T, to create an AT&T, or Absinthium and Tonic. Now, we'll take the glass. Fill it with ice, and over that we'll pour some Green Fairy. Use a couple of wedges of lime, give it a nice citrus bite, similar to the G&T, and then top off with tonic. And just before serving, we'll give it a nice Flat stir. Refreshing, light, and a beautiful colour. Another perfect way of mixing green fairy absinthe is in the apple synth cocktail. And this is how we make it. First of all, we add in green fairy absinthe. Then, five to six leaves of mint. Place them in your hand. So four or five mint leaves. That'll just release the mint oils. Pop those in. We add the apple juice. A splash of lemon and a splash of sugar syrup. Throw in your ice. Now, the particular thing with this cocktail is because we have those fragments of mint throughout the cocktail, we're going to double strain so it comes out nice and clean. So, we'll get rid of that ice, nice and chilled, our tea strainer. And pour. Perfect. Just as a final touch, we'll grab the top sprig of the mint as our garnish. And that, my friends, is the Appleson cocktail.
Now, Green Fairy's uh, wicked brother, Dar Bell, is a little bit higher in proof, so it needs a little bit of special consideration when you're mixing it with other alcoholic products. Now, Dar Bell in Czech means devil, so watch out. Now, the first drink we're going to make with Dar Bell is something I like to call the black magic. Okay. Now, what we start off is with a shot glass. We're going to put in three parts coffee liqueur. and one part darbell, which we're just going to float over the surface here. All right, the next step is the fire. Now, because darbell is high proof, this should light quite easily. There we go. Now, we're going to grab ourselves I'll ground that mig and sprinkle some over the top. This should give us our magical effect. Now the burning of the darbell will reduce the alcohol volume. The beautiful coffee liqueur will smooth that out as well. And then the nutmeg will bring it all together. Now always remember, never try and blow a flaming shot out. It could backfire. Just simply grab yourself a napkin and place it over the top. Now give it a few moments and that shot is ready to drink. Cheers. Another way to mix Darbell and make use of that high proof is to mix it in a flip style. So we're going to make a cocktail called the Devil's Lair. And we'll start off by pouring our Darbell into our mixing glass. Then we're going to add our triple sec, in this case citronge. Some fresh lemon juice. A teaspoon or bar spoon of caster sugar, which will dissolve very easily. And finally, one whole fresh egg. We'll give it a nice hard shake. This will allow it to emulsify without any dilution. Add in the ice. And shake again. Once you've got that nice and shaken, take the ice out of your chilled glass. And strain. Devil's Lair in. And, as the classic cause would have it, a nice sprinkle of nutmeg. And there you have it. The Devil's Lair. This next absinthe we're about to use, one of the very few that actually has the herbs macerating in the bottle, making it a continuously infusing absinthe. The other very special thing about Karuna is that the recipe is over a hundred years old. Okay, so what we're going to do with this herbal marvel is create the golden spell, and this is how we make it. First we add in the Karuna, then we put equal amounts of Alizé Gold, passion fruit liqueur, and a vanilla liqueur, in this case, liquor 43. And most importantly, to give it that citrus effect, some fresh pineapple juice. We'll fill that shaking glass up with ice. 
give it a nice hard shake. Teeny glass, nice and chilled. Now, because the uh, Karuna has that, those herbs macerating in the bottle, it's usually a good idea to double strain. There we go. Beautiful coloration. The only thing that needs to be done is just... Nice, simple pineapple leaf. And there we go, the golden spell. Now, the next drink I'm going to make with Karuna is inspired by the classic Negroni. The only difference is that I've replaced the Campari and gin with Karuna absinthe. So this is how we do it. Take a rocks glass and fill it with ice. Now we're going to add in our sweet vermouth. The same amount of Karuna absinthe. And then we're going to put in orange juice. And this is going to give us our orangey characteristics of Campari. As well as reduce that uh, strong alcohol content. Now as the final touch, we're going to grab ourselves a fresh lemon peel and just twist that over the top. Just to give us some nice lemon zest. Then you throw the whole into there, give it a nice stir with the peel, and that's ready to serve the Bohemian. Well, hopefully I've been able to demonstrate the virtues of using Czech absinthe in the realm of cocktails. As you'll be able to determine, the lack of sweeter anise flavour allows more room to move when wanting those herbal tones in your drinks. And remember that absinthe is a high proof spirit and requires special consideration and is best served mixed or diluted. So for the good of any intrepid customers, avoid serving any absinthe in a shot. Also remember that the spirit of the Green Fairy lives on.